All right, everybody out there on YouTube, welcome back to another Chem Complete session, and we're doing a practice session right now for organic chemistry. So if you have not watched the Naming Alkanes lecture, I would strongly encourage you to do so at this time. I will leave a link down in the description that leads to that particular video. Uh, you want to be exposed to the entire lecture before you attempt to practice these types of problems. If you are good with that, whether you learned it through that video or not, you can go ahead and you can attempt to practice naming these compounds here. So this is some general practice for naming alkanes. I've given you four different structures here. So your goal is to go through and to come up with the proper name for each of these structures. I want you to pause the video, attempt to work through this yourself, and if you're successful with it, then you can go ahead and basically unpause the video and I'll walk through and you can check yourself against my answer. So go ahead and pause the video and I will see you guys in just a minute. All right, welcome back everybody. Hopefully you had a chance to work on those problems. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, the main chain right here is going to be a cyclohexane that I'm working with. I'm talking about number one here. We're going to work sequentially through this doing one, two, three, and then four. With that cyclohexane, I have the choice of a one, two, three, or a one, two, three. In this case, because two substituents are in position one, I'm definitely going to assign the one up here so that I get a one, one, three instead of a one, three, three. So this would be two, this would be three. Thinking about it alphabetically, I have bromo, and this chain right here has three carbons, so it would be propyl, which would be P. So B comes before P, so I'm going to list this as 1,1-dibromo, and then I would continue with 3-propyl cyclohexane. That would be the full official name for that compound up there. All right, number two. This one's a little bit tricky because you have to keep in mind that the longest carbon chain starts down here. So it's one, two, so on and so forth as I count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so this would be a nonane. Okay. If you just count directly across, you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You will have an octane because this is an ethyl while this is a propyl. This extends the chain by 1. So the longest chain that you have here, I'm outlining it in red, would be this right here. That's your longest carbon chain. All right. Now in terms of numbering, if I continue the numbering this way, I have 3, 4, four and then a five six so I would have a four six going that way now what if I reversed it right so going from right to left I'd have a one two three I'd have a four here going on I'd have a five and then I'd have a six so it doesn't matter either way I have a four six now in a case like this where it does not matter and I could pick either both of these answers would technically be correct so I'll just go ahead and stick with the first numbering system where I was going from left to right. So if that's the case, I end up with a 4-ethyl and a 6-methyl. So what, I, what I'm saying is you could also have 4-methyl, 6-ethyl. They both would be correct in this case. Now, uh, ethyl comes before methyl alphabetically. So I would list this as 4-ethyl, 6-methyl. Nonane. That would be the correct answer for naming that compound. This one, the number three, the largest carbon chain is most definitely the one going across, and you should see that the numbering should start over here because I have the chloro there. One, two, three, four, okay, versus if I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have a one, four instead of a four, seven here. Okay, the, as I just stated, because I said 7, the longest carbon chain here is 7. So this would be a heptane. And on top of that, I need to list my substituents. I have chloro and I have isopropyl. Remember, isopropyl is going to carry the I, alphabetically speaking. So chloro comes first. I'm going to have one chloro. 
and then I would have four isopropyl heptane. That would be the proper name for that compound. And then finally, the last one, you should be able to very readily see that the main compound is going to be a cyclopentane. And if I take a look at this here, I have a 1, 2, 3 relationship, so I can number it either way. It doesn't matter. I'll go ahead and start this way this time. 1, 2, 3. So in this case, I'm going to have a 1, 2. I need to include the di because I have two of the same, so it would be di iodo, and then 3 methyl cyclopentane, and that would be the correct name for that structure. So hopefully you guys found this practice session useful. Continue practicing naming your alkanes. It's very important to get the basics down because once you get to higher functional groups like alkenes and alcohols and ethers and all those, you know, other functional groups that exist, you need to have the basics of naming down because there's only going to be slight variations when we start naming functional groups. So keep practicing. Thumbs up the video if you found it helpful. You are welcome to leave comments. I will get back to them as soon as possible. And uh, if you remember to subscribe, you will get all of the latest updated information. So thanks for learning with me, guys, and I will see you for the next lecture.